Empowerment. A happy, successful, resilient household always possesses security, value, and empowerment. But far and away, the most important of these elements of success is empowerment. Without empowerment, the security and value remain unattainable. At Wales Can, over the years, we've seen as how times change, families seek different strategies to find empowerment, and we'll share that with you now in the story of four generations. Now, my great-grandparents were farmers, but more than that, they were homesteaders, pioneers even, and they faced a very different world than we do today. Now, they weren't people of naturally exceptional means, and they looked to find some opportunity for themselves and their children. They lived in a world that was rich in resources, but those resources were hard to come by, as the only means to extract them were through hard physical labor. They chose to create empowerment for themselves by carving out a farm from a patch of raw land on the prairies through the sweat of their brow and a team of mules. They never had much, but certainly they had what most of us would call self-sufficiency. They had lots of skills. Land was cheap, so they could, they could access that. They provided most of what they needed for themselves, and I'm sure that they found a great deal of satisfaction in that. Whatever security or value they had, they created that for themselves too. They pretty well knew how to do most anything necessary to keep a life together, most of what they owned, they either made for themselves, as that's all they could have afforded, and they either, either did it for themselves or they simply didn't do it, and that's how they went about their lives. Now, I doubt they thought a great deal about the details of their various options, because in the world they lived in, there really weren't that many, and they faced the world as it came to them. Now, my grandparents inherited this farm in relatively early in life, as well as my grandparents, great-grandparents were quite broken up by the hard labor and they died probably what we'd consider young. My grandparents were quite fortunate in their timing as land and resources were still cheap, but something new was just starting to emerge, which would be machinery and new farming technology. So it wasn't too long before the whole team of mules was replaced by a tractor, which allowed my grandfather to farm much more efficiently and much more profitably and much, much more land than his father could have ever considered. So rather than 40 acres, it didn't take long until that was 400 acres and he could largely do it by himself. So they had far more income than did their parents. So rather than providing most everything for themselves, it became a lot more sensible to simply buy a lot of it from the store. While my grandmother certainly had a lot of the core skills, that she grew up with to maintain everything in the household, it didn't make any economic sense for her to do so. It was, it was just cheaper, a lot of times, to buy it. So priorities began to change, and the strategies that they used to seek security, value, and empowerment began to really change, too, to reflect the world they lived in. And the main way that these changes came about was that within the household, they did less and less for themselves, and they simply found it easier to either buy or hire when they found they needed something. And they too were sensibly facing the world as it came to them, and they chose strategies that made sense. Now, my parents were still farm kids, born on farms, but by the time they were coming of age to make decisions about how they're gonna live their lives, the world had changed a great deal. I mean, farming was still a viable option, but it was a world of tremendous resources, technological advances, access, and economic growth. So while there was a certain amount of nostalgia associated with a self-sufficient life, it was far easier and probably a lot more fun to simply go get a steady job someplace, make good money, and buy whatever you needed. And there was an ever-increasing number of fine options of cool stuff to buy to choose from. So most of their generation left the family farms for the cities and those opportunities. Basically, anyone who wanted a job could find one, and most of those jobs were pretty good. Times were easy, by and large, for sure, and it was easy not to notice the steady increase in the cost of land, the ever-increasing scarcity, and the ever-increasing cost of li living that was sneaking up behind the scenes. 
they didn't tend to notice it because they were ahead of the curve and they could while they could see a lot of these costs like say rises in real estate values they came to them more as opportunities for income than as expenses now it was a good party while it lasted and nobody worried much about resilience um, if something wore out, you simply bought a new one. If you needed something done, you simply hired someone to do it. And towards the end, it may have not even been cheap to do so, but it didn't really matter. People had money in their pockets, and it hardly made sense to do anything else. So they, my parents, faced a very fortunate world for sure. But their strategies, too, reflected their circumstances, and they embraced the world as it came to them. And then there's now. Most of us today face a world of scarcity, of high cost of living, an economy that was designed to serve the needs of the previous very affluent generation that's ahead of us with overcapacity in almost every sector, which can't help but create lower wages and overall declining purchasing power. Many of us feel that empowerment is pretty hard to come by and that things like value and security of any kind, in this world at least, seem almost laughably distant. A lot of us feel more than a little bit lost. And that's normal. The, the world has changed a great deal in the last four generations and the best strategies to seek resilience have changed with every generation too. But I'll remind you that the basic formula has not. It still takes empowerment, value, and security to make for a happy household. And as always, the most important thing is a sense of empowerment. But what's new once again for this generation, for our generation, is that the opportunity that one seeks is ending up being something that one must create for oneself, much in the manner of our great-great-grandparents, and that value, when we find it, may need to be something also that's created personally and for oneself, rather to expect it through employment or external sources. Now, this is not something that anybody's really had to do or take seriously now for a very long time. But those key skills and this core attitude still really matters. Now at Wells Can, we're here to help you reclaim that attitude, that confidence. In fact, the main message we have for those facing the economic realities to, of today is this. As we face the world that's come to us, it's become very relevant once again to adopt an attitude where you do it yourself. And for a lot of people, doing it yourself, for yourself, may be a far better, far more profitable, and far more empowering way of creating value and security than the typical low paying job. So in this series of classes, we're going to show you a whole host of ways that you can learn to do just that and some of them are quite new, and some of them are old, even traditional. Some of them you will find will work for you very nicely, and some of them may not be practical. At the end of the day, we still recommend checking them all out, because as we go along, we know that even if you don't find a particular skill immediately valuable, the confidence the empowerment that you get from having that skill always is important because knowing you can do something teaches you you can do it for yourself. And that confidence of being able to do it for yourself is what empowerment is really all about.